Welcome to a day of prayer. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Together, let's engage in relationship with Christ through prayer, faith, and His Word. Good morning and welcome. I'm LaCharles and you're listening to a day of prayer this morning Bible study. We're so glad you can join us. But before we get into the word, let's pray. Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy, Lord, that you give it freely and without reproach, Lord. And we just thank you that you continue to give us your Holy Spirit, Lord, so that way we can strive to be perfect and just like Jesus on this earth, Lord. Not settling for being imperfect, Lord, or giving us an excuse to sin and mess up, Lord, but staying in the straight and narrow, Lord. And, Lord, we just thank you for the people that you put in our lives, Lord, so that we can discuss the word and continue to grow and learn together, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And amen. Well, good morning and welcome, everybody. We are excited to have you with us and excited to continue our discussion on the Lord's house, or our study on the Lord's house. Uh, in the previous episode, we talked about a great many things, but um, the biggest thing would be about Jesus and how all of this points to him. Everything in the house and in the garden pointed to him. And we also talked about his wisdom, his manifold wisdom, and how it is greater than any and everything, and how the enemy, the the devil, the evil one, through the serpent, doesn't have that wisdom, how he missed it. That even when the Lord told him and showed him how he how jesus was going to be used he missed it fulfilling the scripture then of having eyes to, or ears to hear he did not hear and having eyes to see he did not see so let's make sure that we don't miss the wisdom the knowledge the counsel that the lord is giving us and leading us in amen mm-hmm. amen all right so can I get a volunteer to read or reread Genesis chapter 3, please? I will. All right, I promise. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord had made, Lord God, sorry, had made. And he says to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree, trees of the garden, but of the fruit but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has, says, has said, You shall not eat of it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You shall not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took up its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed, sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves coverings. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you're naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you that you should not eat? Then the man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I ate. And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are more cursed than all cattle, and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go, and you shall eat the dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. To the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception, and pain shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Then to Adam he said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife, and have eaten from the tree which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. 
Cursed is the ground for your sake, and toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. But thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb, herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread, till you return to the ground. For out of it you are taken, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Also for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. Then the Lord said, Behold, the man has become like one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put out his hand and take also the tree of life, and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden, to till the ground from which he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed cherubim at the east of the garden of Eden, and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. Mm -hmm. Amen. So at this time, I want to, as is our custom, open up the floor for each of you to have the opportunity to share what the Holy Spirit is speaking and ministering to you, because we, we covered a great many things yesterday, and the whole point and purpose of this is to listen to the Lord for ourselves and, and to learn and grow together, right? Not one person has all the answers, well, with the exception of the Lord, but he speaks and ministers through each of us. So... I want to give that opportunity, and of course, in that, if you have any questions, please ask them. All right, we're learning and growing together and maturing in the things of the Lord. So, who would like to begin? I will. All right, Charles. Okay, the first thing I wanted to talk about was like how you, Dad, were talking about, or the Lord said that He desired obedience more than sacrifice. Mm hmm. And the Lord is showing me here is that the Lord is just relaying to me inside of the book of the law, or the Lord gave Moses the law and stuff, and he told the children of Israel, was that even when he did that, it wasn't more so about the law, but it was about their obedience and the following again. Mm -hmm. It really, the stuff in it, I won't say it didn't matter, but that's not what the Lord was looking for, because if you completed everything, if you could have, it still wouldn't have gotten you, you into heaven. So what the Lord showed me here was that even like with a parent to a child, they give laws so the child can learn obedience. It's not so the wild child is, okay, Billy Bob, if you eat that peanut butter sandwich in five, five bites, you're going to die. No, it's mm -hmm. about obedience. If you say eat in this many bites, that's how many bites you're supposed to eat it in, mm -hmm. no matter what. So the Lord just showing me here was that, the same thing is what's occurring. Even what people thought was the sacrifice and how he gave the law and how to sacrifice all these things, even still in doing that, he was still desiring obedience. Because though the children of Israel made all these sacrifices, it didn't save them. Only when they were obedient to the Lord did it happen. An example is Saul. Uh -huh. he, he sacrificed, uh, I'm not sure what he sacrificed, but Burnt Sam... Offering. Yes, a burnt offering. Samuel was delayed in coming, so he offered a burnt offering, but that's not what the Lord wanted. He didn't desire that Saul did that. Mm. And then the second point the Lord is sharing with me. Oh, can we build on that? Right. Yes. I got another scripture for you. About Jeremiah 7, 22 and 23. Or 20, 21 through 23, excuse me. It says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Add your, add your burnt offerings to your sacrifices and eat the flesh. For in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt, I did not speak to your fathers or command them concerning burnt offerings and sacrifices. But this command I gave them, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people, and walk in the way that I command you, that it may be well with you. It doesn't get much better than the garden in paradise, right? Except for heaven. Well, exactly. <laughs> but I mean, on, but, on this earth. Right. That, that, is, that is an amazing thing. But the Lord even says it there. Like, hey, I didn't command you about these burnt offerings as soon as I brought you out of Egypt. I just commanded you to be obedient. It's our disobedience that then required a propitiation, a covering a substitution for us and what we did against the Lord. Yes. 
So, I mean, we should understand that. Right? And, and that's not the only place, but you see that in that, what does it also cover? It also covers the will of the Lord. He will be our God, and we will be his people. And you see that expressed throughout the entirety of the Bible. It is the plumb line. And it covers his will, is his covenant, is his plan, is his purpose for us. That we will be his people because we love him. And because of uh, his love that we're... Yes, his love that he gave us that we're reciprocating back to him is demonstrated through our obedience to him. But you find that, that language in the Abrahamic covenant, in the Davidic covenant, and throughout, again, the entirety of scripture from beginning to end. And you also see it demonstrated. You see it demonstrated right here, or the lack of it demonstrated. Started off about life in the garden and how it was good and and all these things, and then you see it shift when they put their thought, focus, hope on other things, when sin entered. Yes. So we should not be unaware, right? But you see that throughout Scripture as well. I will be your God, and you will be my people. Said, stated plainly, and or demonstrated throughout the entirety of Scripture. We have a teaching on that and uh, understanding the will of the Lord. and So I don't want to rehash all that here, but it is important. So I'll, I'll let you, you know, uh, scroll through our, our previous podcasts and find that episode. And then, of course, there's a, a follow-on to that, which is operating in the will of the Lord. Because um, it's important. It is absolutely important and imperative for our lives. So please continue, sir. Okay, the second point the Lord wanted me to point out was uh, verse 22. And the Lord just brought to me my remembrance. And I'm not sure exactly what scripture, but inside of the Gospels, Jesus has said that he was a bread of life. And that's instantly what I thought about here. Was that the tree of life that the Lord was describing in the garden was Jesus. John 6. John 6. And actually, he says it eight times in that chapter. That he is the bread of life. Yes. Mm-hmm. And the Lord is just showing here is that the tree of life that the Lord was referring to here was Jesus. About them going to Jesus. It's not that he didn't want them to do it, but they had no desire. Like how we had been discussing the last week and how I said that with the tree of life and then there was the tree of good and evil and how they the Lord said you can eat the tree of life but how they forsit, forsook it for something they weren't allowed to have and it's kind of like how you and mommy say you guys give away all this stuff for something that you can't have you say no Lord I don't want that but the stuff you said I can't have that's what I want though you miss out on the blessing that he's already given you mm-hmm. so the Lord should show me here was that it was just a lack of desire of on Adam and Eve's part to go and take hold of Jesus. And that brings me to my third point um, about where Adam said, So he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And I was just mulling over that and thinking about it because they said, Who was Jesus? To, not Jesus. Who was the Lord talking to that when Adam heard his voice? Before he called out for Adam. Because Adam had already hit himself. Who, What was he referring to? What was he talking about? And then. How are they still naked after they sewed fig leaves? <laughs> well they weren't naked after they sewed fig leaves. Clearly. Well. That's what Adam claimed he was. He said he was naked. But it talks about it in chapter 2 right? And we. I think we, think we went over this. How they were Naked. Mm-hmm. And unashamed. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right? And and I think I asked you guys to to look up a scripture on where it says, And we are laid bare or open before him. Amen. Right? That's Hebrews. Yeah, but I'm, I'm with Le Charles. I mean, I'm, I'm, I, you're not going to, well, I would say Le Charles. I wouldn't feel very um, confident in my covering if I had a fig leave over my loin area. And it's not the same as like having something like. 
you know. It, it, it's not just about how that. How secure can you sew a fig leaf? You know what I mean? Exactly. The <laughs> you moment know, you move the wrong way. Whoops, there goes my fig leaf. The moment you <laughs> pierce it with something, they tear and they shred. And, yeah. Yeah. So, so the, the scripture that I'd ask you to find is, is yes, it's Hebrews 4.13. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Amen. Everything is uncovered and exposed before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Amen. I love that. Wait, and, uh, and wait, at that time in the garden, was not Jesus looking for Adam to walk with him? Yes. But then the questions start coming. And clearly there was a, a change, right? Yes. So then it went from, I just want to walk with you, to now we got to give an account. And then we, I mean Adam, had to give an account, right? Yes. Mm. Okay. So we know that Father, Son, and Holy Spirit were there because they said, let us make man in our image. And they had conversations. Yes. In the midst of their creation. So is it, are you saying that you thought he was listening to God have a conversation? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, they were talking with each other and he overheard their voices? Or that's like not directly voice. what I was referring to. Okay. What are you referring to, babe? Well, First please, part of what I was referring to about the conversation, it was just the openness that the lord had with adam and it was just like if you and dad have a conversation in the living room normally i have itchy ears and my ears just happen to hear it you're a chief eavesdropper <laughs> <laughs> is that right ear hustler are you yes <laughs> oh. truth hallelujah <laughs> okay go ahead and how it was just the lord showing me here is that the lord wasn't afraid of hiding knowledge from adam Amen. he wasn't trying to keep him in the dark which then Glory I was just God. thinking about it. How did Adam know how to sew? How did he know how to sew fig leaves? As the Lord wanted him to be dumb like a caveman or what they claim were cavemen, he would have just given him no brain. There'd how could he no name need. all the animals? Yes. Mm. So I didn't say God told him to name them these things. He said God watched him. He brought them to him to see what he would call them. Carry on. Yes. God is not afraid of us knowing him. Amen. And then about the, because he was naked, it just reminded me of how dad's favorite example he gave was that when a baby knocked something over or broke it, they go, ooh, ooh, and run in the other direction. And then, why did you do that? I didn't do it. Somebody else did. And the Lord was just reminding me. Or I don't know. Or you give an excuse. like Uh Mm Uh-huh. Which I I don't know is an excuse. Not me did it. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Nobody did it. Uh Who did it? Nobody. Another invisible Mm -hmm. child. Uh Uh-huh. And how the Lord is just showing me here was that even the the way that Adam went about it and like how I go about certain situations, if dad has to pull it out of me saying, okay, ask this question because I only give him a fraction. Okay, dad, here's a fraction of the truth and dad has to pull it out of me. When it fully comes out, is it me telling the truth? Most definitely not. And the same as what happened here was that though Adam claimed he said he hid himself and he was afraid because he was naked. I'd also say what he'd use that as an excuse and a covering to hide that he had eaten the tree of the good and e- of good and evil, mm. which as you dad are fond of saying was only of known evil because he already knew good, mm-hmm. knew good. He already knew all the good. He yes, only knew good. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. What else? Oh, yes. And then I also... Go ahead, sir. And then I also want to talk about the first section of this to verse 6. And then I'm going to go to verse 12 to 13. And it just reminded me of something that the Lord has sh- shown me a while ago. When it just reminded me of how... Most times if I got in trouble when I was worldly, if I got in trouble, I was all too fond of boarding other people's ships and sinking them with mine. And how... You might sure want to explain that a little bit. Myself. Oh, okay. So, so basically, misery loves company. Yes, that's exactly okay. the saying I was about to use. Okay. And how the Lord was just showing me here was that, first of all, not to look down on Adam and Eve for the mistakes they made. Because I know for myself... And 
I kind of I look at the children of Israel saying, "Man, I could have seen that a mile away. Why are you guys being so dumb and doing that?" Mm-hmm. And how, in truth, when the exact same situation comes to me, I say, "Nah, Lord, I got this one." But in truth, I don't. So that was the first thing the Lord showed me here, and then He was showing me um, that. Here first, it was Eve who ate the fruit, first of all, because she had already deceived herself. And then she alighted again when she said it was desirable to make one wise. Though she already had wisdom and understanding, if she could even form a cohesive thought, she was already wise. And she had the Holy Spirit with her and the Lord and Jesus. And then after she ate the fruit, she gave to Adam, who was also drawn away by his own lust. He was also greedy for the fruit. And it was like you and dad had often said was Adam should have seen the fruit saying, isn't that the fruit off this tree? I've seen it before. Why are you eating again? Mm -hmm. But Adam took it and was mum the word. Mum's the word I think is the same. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is the same. He ate it (coughs) and he took it and ate it. Then later he blamed the Lord first. Then he blamed his wife. And then he finally said, I didn't. Hmm. Blame God and woman, his wife, in one breath. Well, we could talk about it for a while, <clears throat> but, you know, he was there with her. Because he said, and she took it and gave it to her husband who was with her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so he failed in his role, first and foremost, of protecting her and standing in the gap. Because the minute the Satan started running his mouth about God that wasn't lined up, he should have stepped in between and, like, we're done. Let's leave. So it just reveals that the sin nature... Again, was already in him. He can't blame the woman. Man can't take a stance. Well, mm-hmm. woman was the first sin. It was already in the man's heart to do it as well, too. He was just letting the woman be the scapegoat for it so he could do what he wanted to do, in, in, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. But we're not doing a sermon about that. <laughs> we're not. <laughs> we're not. But, yeah. but we do have to look at, at the, the tree, right? Um, and we're going to look at that in more detail. But you, you Dean, had, had brought up about why are there, there are two trees. And, well, uh, why the one tree? By the one tree. Why was there a tree of good and evil there to begin with? Because that was the only tree they were forbidden of. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Everything else was, the tree of life was available to them. How about and, it? And Enjoy. even Eat with freely. the tree of life, it points to Christ, of right. course. Right. Um, and and well, Charles, I, I'll bring this up because you brought up about the Lord being the bread of life. And that was something yes. that was in the temple. Right. There was a table of showbread. Yes. Amen. There wasn't a tree in that sense, right? But in John 6, right, and we've already gone over, this is the chapter that Jesus says eight times, I am the bread of life, right? It was the, the, the two trees were what? The tree of what? The tree of life and the tree of good and evil. And the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But the tree of life, uh, John six thirty two. Jesus said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, But my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. There it is in the center of the garden. And where was the tabernacle, the tent of meeting? In the center of the camp. The center of the camp. Mm -hmm. Three tribes were camped to the north, three to the south, three to the east, and three to the west. Further, further proving and pointing to Christ. Amen. Well, let's also look at the enemy. So we should not be unaware of his schemes. And what was he pointing to? What did he push or prompt or promote in their face? That be, be like, like God. God. The opposite tree. The Lord is already pointing to himself. This is me. This is my tree, right? Eat of it. Right? Isn't that what he yes. said when you talking about being the bread of life? Was to eat of him, right? And that, that's why the people couldn't understand. The ones that were offended. The ones that were offended, exactly. Because he said, eat. You must eat of me. And drink his blood. Th- exactly. It was too hard for them. Mm-hmm. It was too difficult for them to understand, Exactly. But then we have fear, and that's what Jesus was pointing to, which was himself, the way, the truth, and the life. But here we have in the garden, the serpent pointing to the other tree. But then let's also look at what he says. 
you should have, and we talked about this when we were discussing the law of the temple and the whole mountain is holy, right? But he says it multiple times and in multiple ways. You shall have first in the commandments, you shall have no other gods before me. You shouldn't share a boundary and a border with me, right? Don't put one yes. beside me. That's not right to do. But here we have it in the garden. Why? Because it's about choice. And the Lord is showing you the good and the right and righteous way to go. The life-producing way. Where the enemy is pointing to the opposite way. Be like God. Be similar. But isn't that clue the wrong place? Because the whole mountain's holy. All of it is to be dedicated to him? Yes. Okay. Yes. So let's understand these things. And also what is said throughout, especially the law, the Torah, the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible, the books of Moses. And we covered this last week. I set before you today life and death, blessing and the curse. But choose life that you may live. You and your children or your seed and your children's children, that it would be well with you, right? Yes. You see the same pattern all pointing to Christ? Yes. Yes. I digress. Please continue. <laughs> ah. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. And the Lord, what showing me here is that besides the futile attempt of using something like Mr. Dean said, it's going to tear as soon as you move around, and it's not going to work, it was also the relationship and the perspective of many people that we can cover ourselves from our sins. I mean that instead of going to the Lord and saying, Lord, forgive me for this sin, we say, yeah, Lord, just don't look at that one. And how that says you try to throw a blanket or a rug over and try to smash it down and hope the Lord doesn't notice that there's a lump there. But it's mm -hmm. quite visible. And so the Lord should show me here was that what they were doing was trying to cover themselves from their own sins and hide themselves from it instead of going to the Lord and saying, okay, Lord, we've sinned and we've done this. Lord, make us new and clean. They first went to themselves to look for the answer. Mm -hmm. But that won't last. It won't remain, right? Yes. As it was pointed out, as soon as it's picked off the branch, it begins to wither and die. Yes. Okay. So how can we do something and expect it to cover us for eternity? There's only one that, that can, could, and did do that for us. Yes. Okay. Well, we have to understand that. We can't cover it up and expect it to last. Right? Which fulfills other scriptures saying it will all be exposed. Some people's sins will be exposed before they go down to the pit and others after. Right? Yes. Okay. So let's bring it all before him. Yes. Let's repent and come back into alignment with him while there is time. Anyone else? Is it a lot or is it a quick thing, sir? It's kind of a lot. It's kind of a lot? All right. Yes. Well, how about we pause there for today and we'll let you kick it off next time. On the next podcast. How about that? Yes, Dad. All right, sir. But can I get a volunteer to close out in prayer? I will. All right, Layla. Lord, we just thank you for today and for giving us the opportunity to choose you, Lord, and to come into alignment with your word and to live for you, God. And we thank you for the grace that covers us when we choose to walk with you, Lord, and the blood that Jesus Christ has shed for the remission of our sins, Lord, so that we can stand before you, Lord. And we just thank you for your creation and for the beautiful things that you have blessed us with and put here in the earth for our enjoyment, God. And we just thank you for who you are today. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' mm. name, amen. 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 Well, we love you. God bless you. And have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to A Day of Prayer. 
We trust the Lord that you are strengthened and encouraged in your relationship with Christ. Visit us on our website, adayofprayer.org, where you can check out our blog, find additional study resources, or shop the official A Day of Prayer store. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So until next time, take care and God bless you.